What's up everybody, this is DJ Jordan Nelson. Today I'm partnering with idjnow.com yet again to do another comparison, this time between three moving headlights from Chave DJ. On the table today I have the Intimidator Spot 260, the Intimidator Spot 360, and the Intimidator Spot 375Z. These are the big, bad moving heads in Chave's line. These are gonna be brighter, more powerful than the lights we looked at in the compact moving head video, which if you haven't watched that, you definitely should. But today, I'm gonna give you my real world thoughts on the good and the bad of each of these lights, tell you who they're aimed at, what situations they're going to be best at, and hopefully you can make a decision about which one is gonna be best for your company. Now, before we dive into it, as always, make sure that you like this video, you share it if you found the content interesting, make sure you follow IDJ now because they're always putting out good content, you're gonna to get to see more of me, so you don't wanna miss that. So let's start off by talking about what's similar between all of these lights. First and foremost, as you can see from them sitting on the table, they're bigger and they're heavier. We're really moving into the more professional fixtures here. These are gonna be a little more difficult to transport for the small DJ operations. Not impossible, but that's something to keep in mind with these larger moving heads. They also have much brighter LEDs inside of them. Uh, more than double the lights we've looked at previously and in some cases triple or quadruple. And so these lights are gonna be great for those situations where you're in more well-lit rooms, where you're in larger venues, where you need the additional power to punch through environments that aren't completely dark, small uh, wedding venues. So these are gonna give you the extra output that you need. These are gonna include things like electronic focus, electronic zoom, prisms, gobo rotation, and more. And so we'll dive into the features that each model has in just a moment. Being Chave products, they also have really neat features such as totem mode, which allows you to set this on a totem to use at your event and use a setting internally to make sure that the light does not turn around and blind you in the DJ booth or shoot on the wall or the ceiling above you where it's not needed, which is a really nice feature. They also have the ability to save one scene internally so you can save something that you've created that you really like and recall it without having to use programming. So those are a lot of similarities between these three lights. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna zoom in on each individual light, show you up close and personal, lay over some footage I took of the light in action and tell you about the good and the bad and who I think each light is aimed at. All right, so let's start with this guy first. This is the Chave Intimidator Spot 260. This is a slight upgrade in size and power over the 160, right? Makes sense. Uh, with a 75 watt LED inside and a weight of 12 pounds. This light, I would say, is firmly still in the category of portable moving headlights. This one is small enough that a DJ that's operating out of a car could put this in their vehicle and take it to their events without too much hassle. The other two lights we're gonna look at can't say the same, but we'll get to that in a minute. As far as features, this has interchangeable gobos, uh, eight of them, as well as eight colors, and it has a three facet prism, which is an upgrade over the compact moving heads, up to 14 channels of DMX, if you prefer to control your lights that way, as well as built-in movement macros. So if you want to program this quickly, it has movements built into the light that you can activate with DMX, uh, and it will do movements such as you know circles, uh, the search light effect and whatnot, without you having to create those manually, which is super nice. This light is definitely an increase in brightness. It's definitely gonna be useful in more well-lit rooms than the, the compact moving heads, although it does not have the output of the larger fixtures that we're gonna look at. So one drawback is this is kind of sitting in the middle. If you're not sure if you need a really bright fixture or if you need something more compact, this might work well for you, but it's kind of in an awkward spot in the middle where it doesn't have enough to do the, the largest rooms, but maybe is overkill for the smallest rooms. So look into the specs, look into videos and stuff and watch the overlay that I'm doing and see if uh, it's gonna apply to your situation. This works best, I would say, for hanging from trussing or from T-bars. The reason I say that is because the base is really small. This is one of the cons of this light. I don't know why the base is smaller than the yoke itself. It kind of makes me feel like it's a little unstable, although pushing it, it takes quite a bit of force to move it, so it probably would be stable, but it, I, I don't know. For some reason, this just worries me. Using it on the floor, it didn't look like it was gonna tip over or anything or on a table, but keep that in mind. If you're just gonna hang this from some trussing or from a T-bar, this is probably gonna be a great option for that. And like I said, this one is really the truly mobile option. So if you're a smaller guy doing smaller events, uh, then this would be perfect for you. Only other downside with this light is it still has a manual focus ring. 
All right. The other lights we're going to look at have that electronically inside that you can control with DMX. This one you have to do with your hand before the event starts and you can't change it on the fly without getting up to the light and making sure it's stopped and moving it. So uh, if that's something that's important to you, being able to focus the light on the fly, uh, consider one of the bigger guns. But that's the Chave Intimidator Spot 260, a great smaller option for people that are really looking for something compact. Now let's look at something a little bit bigger. All right, so this beautiful white light is the Chave Intimidator Spot 360. This is, as you can see, a much ooh, heftier, much taller, wider light than the Spot 260, and you're also going to get a big increase in power, going up to a 100 watt LED. So this is where I start to consider these lights crossing into the more professional category, the more uh, high-end category of moving headlights. This is not going to be something you can just throw in a flimsy gig bag in the back of your Corolla like I would do at a wedding. This is going to be something you're going to want a road case for or at least a hardback case and it's going to take up a substantial bit of room especially if you're using multiples of these. So consider this if you have a larger production company, if you're doing those high school dances, uh, before I tell you too much about who it's for though, let's talk about some specs. Again, 100 watt LED, dual rotating prisms this time, so you've got uh, a linear prism as well as like a tri-prism, and those prisms can rotate in both directions, which is really neat, allows you to have some really awesome effects. Uh, the wider beam angle on this light is going to give you a wider area of coverage, so if you're need needing to shoot down onto a stage, you don't have a long throw distance, but you need to cover a wide area, this is going to have more of a, a wide beam angle than the 260, which we looked at. This is also going to have a motorized focus, so like we talked about on the 260, that had a manual ring you had to use your hand for. This one is internal, allowing you to focus the light remotely at each event from your DMX controller without having to climb up on your trussing or do it beforehand. Super handy feature to have. Has the same color and gobo wheel with interchangeable gobos, which is super nice. Uh, and I love the white finish on this if you're doing the weddings, if you're doing the corporate events and you need that aesthetic. Boom, you've got it with this light. The only con that I would say this light has would be the manual zoom. So as we'll see in the 375, you've got a electronic zoom that's built into the light. You can operate with DMX. This light, you still need to zoom the light using a manual ring, which you can see right here. So focus, there's the zoom. Oh, awkward, not that happy with it. But Focus is internal, so you can't adjust the focus, just the zoom, you have to adjust it beforehand, which the zoom, if you don't know, is how wide the output or narrow the output of the light is. The focus brings the images, the gobos that you project into focus. So they're two different things, kind of similar, kind of confusing. Uh, this one has electronic focus, not electronic zoom. All in all though, great fixture, really hefty. All of these fixtures are built super quality, super industrial, hard. Um, they've got, let's see, Plastic, plastic around here, metal on some parts, metal on the parts that count, but just really hefty. It's got these nice handles. One thing I did want to point out with this light and all of the other lights, if I can flip this around, um, is that they have power con linking, which is oh, over here. There we go. Power con linking. So this is a lockable power cord, so you can really easily plug each light in. Uh, and daisy chain the power to the next light and you have to worry about it getting pulled out. You've obviously got your DMX in and out put on these as well. And last but not least, <sighs> wow, that thing is heavy. Let me just check we're in frame here. I'll have to scoot that forward so it fits in. This is the Chave Intimidator Spot 375 and it's actually so big it's not even in frame. Let me back this out here. Can I back it out? Yeah, come back a little more. Oh, is it gonna fit? There we go. <sighs> Holy crap, that thing is big. Uh, so this one, largest, brightest LED light. This one is gonna have a 150 watt LED inside of it. When you need the big guns, when you've got the big rooms, the fully lit ballrooms, this is gonna be the light you're gonna call. It's hefty, 27 pounds, not something you can throw around easily, not something you're gonna wanna keep in a floppy gig bag, stick the sucker in a road case, which is available for it, so that's nice. Uh, same number of colors and gobos as the other fixtures. One more DMX channel, and that's because of the electronic zoom. So this has the most features of all of the lights, 15 channels. The last channel allows you to change the size of the projection, the, the, the beam angle remotely through the electronic zoom. Super nice. Again, more features that allow you to do more effects that you couldn't otherwise with the smaller lights. Cons to this big guy, really, if I have to get nitpicky, it's just really heavy. 
again, we're reducing the portability of this. So if portability is your main thing and you're not doing large events, don't go with this guy. It's obviously the most expensive of the three. They've gone up in price as we've gone from each one. Um, but really that's just me trying to find something to nitpick. It's a great light. It's a sturdy light. The motors are extremely smooth. I was expecting this big old 375Z to be super slow and sluggish to move around and I was completely wrong. It is fast, it is precise, it gets where it needs to go like instantly. You'll see me running through the features on the video overlaid on top of this light. But it has all the other things the lights have, prisms, uh, the gobos, the color wheels, the split colors, feature packed. There's really not much you can't do with this light. It pretty much does it all. Who is this for? This is the production companies. This is the large school dance DJs, the large corporate event DJs, where you need uh, really finite control over all the features. Now, if I had to choose one thing to improve between all of these lights, it would be the internal sound programs. There's only one and it's just not that exciting. It's kind of a random assortment of all the different colors and movements and gobos and prism that the light can do. Sometimes it's super fast, most of the time it's super fast, sometimes it's slow. It's just really erratic and I wouldn't wanna use it in any event other than maybe in a pinch at a birthday party or a high school dance, but if I was doing a, a, a professional corporate gig or a wedding, I just don't like the Sound Active program that much. Now, granted, most people buying this caliber of light don't use the internal programs. Uh, most of them are gonna be doing lighting design with DMX, but just keep that in mind. And I don't think that would be too hard for Chave to do to add a couple more programs that maybe slow, medium, fast, uh, something a little less erratic. I, I believe my old Chave Intimidator 155 had a lot more options than these do. So maybe we can get that in the next version. That about wraps up our comparison between the Chave Intimidator Spot 260, 360, and 375 ZIRC. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these fixtures, if you use them, drop a comment, let us know. Let us know what video you wanna see in the future, what comparison we can do. But uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you follow IDJ now so you don't miss any more of these awesome reviews and comparison videos that we've got coming, and we'll see you next time.